Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 107. Yesterday we began the topic of absolute value inequalities, and today we're going to continue with that absolute value inequalities. The problem for today is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4. One more time, absolute value of 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4. Our job is to find out what are the allowable values of x, what values can x take, what values can x assume, and then at the end show that solution on the number line. Let's begin. Even though it says here inequalities, and that's what we are here to learn, let's begin with some, something simple, a simpler scenario. Let's ask ourselves, what would we have on our hand if we had been given, if we had been given an equality? If we were told that the absolute value of x minus 5 is equal to 4, what that would have meant is that, that implies that the value of 3x minus 5 would have to be either equal to negative 4 or 3x minus 5 would have to equal positive 4. Because the absolute value of negative 4 is 4 and the absolute value of positive 4 is 4. So it's this value 3x minus 5 that you see there, this value here 3x minus 5 that we see there is either negative 4 or positive 4. And now we just have to solve for x. Let's do it. Let's add 5 to both sides. The 5 cancel out and 3x equals positive negative 4 and a positive 5 that's positive 1. And we divide by 3 and we end up with 1 third. Let's add 5 to both sides here. 5 cancels out and 3x equals 9 and therefore x equals 3. So we get 1 third and and 3. Just give me one second here. I'm a bit distracted here. There you go. 1 third and a 3. Let's show this part on the number line. Let's show it here on the number line here between 1 third and a 3. Here's our 0. Here's our 3. 1 and 2, so 1 third will be somewhere here. Another thing we have to notice is that, well that's it actually, I never, we are not dealing with inequality, we are dealing with equality. So it has to be either 1 third, so this is one solution here, 1 third or 3. And what we will see in a second, what we will see in a few, a few seconds time is that once we begin to solve this thing in the form of an inequality, whether we are given something greater than or less than sign, it doesn't matter. Once we begin to solve it, these two points, one third and three, will play a significant role. These are the demarcation. This is where the action is going to take place. Let's let's convert this back into the original form. We were told there is in fact greater than or equal to four. Now what we need to ask ourselves is that when is that going to be true? When is when is this thing going to be true? I need the room, so I will we'll have to erase all of this thing. We'll leave there. Just remember, these are the allowable values. So here. That's it. That, that, was the, that was the portion that deals with equality part. I'm going to erase this thing because we don't want to confuse ourselves. But this is how the solution would have looked like. X would be either one third or X would be equal to three if we had the equality here. We don't. We have an inequality, which means we have to start a new problem. So here's a new problem dealing with the inequality. Dealing with inequalities. Now, if we look at number line one more time, here is our positive four and here is our negative. When we're dealing with inequalities, what we have to ask ourselves is, what are the allowable values of this expression right here, 3x minus 5? Think of this as a different value. Let's call, let's call it y here. Where, when would y equal to 4? When would the absolute value of y, absolute value of y has to be more than 4? When would the absolute value of y be 4? Can, think of this as a y. Can, can y be negative 3? Can y be negative 3? If y happens to be negative 3, the absolute value of y would be 3 and 3 is not greater than or equal to 4. We are told that it has to be greater than or equal to 4. Can y be negative 3? The answer is not. answer is no. Y cannot be negative 3. Can y be negative 7? Can y be negative 7? Can y be negative 7? Let's find out. If y happens to be negative 7, the absolute value of y would be positive 7, and positive 7 is positive 7, greater than or equal to 4? Is, is it greater than or equal to 4? The answer is yes. 7 is in fact more than 4. Which tells us that the value of y has to lie, which tells us the value of y has to lie to the left of negative 4 and 
and to the right of negative 4. And since we are showing this as a y, and there is an equal sign here, greater than or equal to, this equal to sign tells us that we have to include this area. We put a, close the circle here. The circle is shown like this, with a closed circle. Now these are the, what we are showing here on the number line here, what we are showing on the number line here, these are the allowable values of 3x minus 5. These, these are the allowable values of 3x minus 5. 3x minus 5 can be either less than negative 4 or 3x minus 5 can be more than positive 4. But we are not interested in solving for 3x minus 5. We were not asked what are the allowable values of 3x minus 5. We are being asked to solve for x, which means we have to know what are the allowable values of x, not 3x minus 5. So we have to solve for it. That's all it is. So that tells us that if the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4, that in, that in turn implies that 3x minus 5 would have to be either, either less than negative 4. I just made a mistake again. I made the same kind of mistake in the previous video. This is where the things get confusing, which is why having this chart in front of you helps. 3x minus 5, 3x minus 5 has to be less than negative 4, has to be less than negative 4, or 3x minus 5 has to be more than positive 4. And now the rest is very simple. We have to solve for x. Let's do that. Let's add 5 to both sides. 5 is going to cancel out. And 3x is less than 1, which means x has to be less than one third. And similarly here, we have a positive 5 on both sides. We add positive 5 and 3x is greater than 9, which means x is, which means x is greater than 3. Now do you recognize these two points? Do you recognize these two points? These were the points that we found there earlier when we were solving for x. Right here, one third and 3. Now we have to so this part here is not the solution. This is the intermediate step. This is the intermediate step. This is the final step, which we're going to show on the top here. I'm going to erase all of this thing, rewrite it nicely. Absolute value of 3x minus 5, we are told, is greater than or equal to 4, which implies that x has to lie between, x has to be less than one third and more than 3. Here is your 0. Well, let's, let's put a 0 here. Here is our 0, here is our 1, here is our 2, and here is our 3. One third is going to be somewhere here. Again, it's going to be a closed circle. It's going to be a closed circle because we have an equal sign, and here is the one third. It has to be less than, uh, less than one third, so it's going to go from here. And it has to be more than 3. Again, the closed circle. And that is the final solution. The solution to this inequality is right here. X has to be less than one third or more than positive one third, a uh, positive three. X has to be more than positive three or less than one third. It comes from here. This part that you see there on the top comes from this guy and this guy together on the top. One more time again, this was the intermediate step. Do you understand? This intermediate step tells us what are the allowable values of the expression that is given in the absolute value sign, the expression that is given to us is 3x minus 5. The allowable values of 3x minus 5 are anything less than negative 4 and anything more than positive 4, which in turn translated into the values of x being either less than one third or more than 3. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.